Now if you want to see what the inside looks like, uh, you have to take off these uh, T15 cap screws. They usually can be tight, they're supposed to be about 3 Newton meters, which for this size of tool will actually, and hold, will be a pretty, uh, pretty tough pull. So anyway, here we go. Ah, okay, that one's free. Then we go to the other side. Okay, that one's free as well. And these can just be screwed right off. I'd, I'd recommend just popping off one first. There's a spring, obviously, that holds the plungers in place, and it pushes against that. So you take off one, hold it in your hand. You can hold it tight without too much effort. It'll start to push a little bit, no big deal. And if you notice, it's pushing apart as I'm doing this because I'm not holding it as tight as I could. And that bops out. I'll just finish this off. There we go. That pulls all the way out. Now normally, this is what the spool valve looks like from the back side. And that's the part with the seal. Uh, that's where all of the oil goes in down onto the intensifier piston, which is right here. Normally, you would have a shim sitting in this position. That's about uh, 0.026 or 0.025-ish in uh, thickness. This is the intensifier piston. And underneath that, you have the plunger and the cap. The plunger in this one's been modified. Unfortunately, somebody wants to talk to me, but I'll finish this off. The plunger has been modified. We took off uh, 0.025 from that end. Uh, you could do a little bit from this end as well if you uh, needed to or wanted to. This is the diamond-like coating you see here. Some of them, depending upon uh, when they were made or remanned, there's going to be uh, uh, either DLC all the way to the top or it's only going to be in this portion here. Uh, if you look down inside of there, you can see how it's set up. Uh, and that's where uh, your intensifier piston sits in this side. In the bottom, the uh, plunger goes in. And if it's perfectly nice, you should be able to push the plunger in back and forth. And it should move very, very easily. Same thing if you were going to test it out, if you wanted to see how much fluid you'd have for movement. You notice that these ones, we've made so that they perfectly sit flush. They're, they're slightly indented about 0.001, so one thousandth of an inch at uh, maximum stroke uh, of the plunger. That's at the plunger at its maximum stroke. Now normally, this would only go up to about this uh, spill port or bleed port. Uh, if you went further past it, obviously as the plunger comes down, it's going to squeeze fuel out there instead of squeezing it this way into the injector. So that's just something to keep in mind when and if you want to make your uh, injectors larger. That's why a lot of times this port is plugged with a uh, ball bearing or something of sorts. They pound it in there or some plug and then they'll uh, crease this area uh, so that it won't come out. Um, perhaps, and it's just me saying this, is that if somebody had a lopy style of injector, more than likely if their injectors were larger, they were still getting some bleed back out of here that was creating a, 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 a poor idle situation. And that's what the inside of your injector looks like. It's a fairly simple system, but it does require it to be clean. Uh, and that's why your fuel and your oil have to be very clean. If uh, Rich Lillipu did a measurement using a laser on these and the spacing between the plunger with the diamond light coating and the side here is incredibly small. Uh, it could take anything as simple as having no lubrication in there, uh, let's say fuel or even just a water out in there, and this thing quite possibly would seize up just like in your, uh, in your injector nozzles they could do the same thing. Anyway, that's what the inside looks like. I'll put it back together again and eventually this will end up in my truck as a 178cc uh, injector.